What's up buns, let's go over some advanced in-depth white mage healing rotations for casual content. These are going to teach you what abilities to use when so you don't freeze up and then just end up spamming cure 2. Yes, this is still a problem in 2023. Make sure to limit break through that subscribe button to give me good pets for the work. Also, you can join my super amazing Discord community if you have any other questions about this specifically or you just want to find a good community to hang out with. I will be covering intermediate to advanced healing in this video and a big shout out to Kuppa slash Narian, my stream moderator here on YouTube for helping record this video. I also have a vast library of guides and tutorials for you to check out, so check my playlist before wondering if I've made a video on the topic. Below level 49, at this point, once you get regen, you should always, always, always have a regen active on the tank during battle. The ability does a 1500 potency cure over 18 seconds or 250 every three server ticks. This is one of your best healing abilities for the white mage toolkit. As soon as your tank pulls the first mob, boom, regen. It can cause aggro issues if you use this before they pull aggro as you'll technically be overhealing and overhealing causes aggro. You'll be relying on Medica for any room-wide abilities, but not many occur at these levels. This is really the only time we get a lot of use out of Medica. It essentially becomes useless after level 50. Cure 2 and Cure 3 are basically meaningless once you get regen. Cure 2 can be used for situations where it may be like an oh shit, but do not start spamming this unless you have a regen on the tank first. Cure 3 is super niche for stack markers. It only has a radius of 10 yams, which means it does not reach that far. So only use this when you're grouped up essentially. We also need to talk about Holy. By far the best ability is White Mage. Not only does it look cool, it also stuns enemy. The reason this matters is because a mob pack that is stunned, they are not auto attacking. This is perceived as a form of mitigation. It will be in its entirety seven seconds. Four seconds for the first one, two seconds for the second one, and one second for the last one. You can kind of think of this as Paladin's invulnerability, but split up a little bit. Be aware that the stun does not stack or overlap. So if your spell speed is too high and you overlap, they will not condense on each other. So essentially, if you cast one holy, they're stunned and immediately cast another one, it will not apply a second stun. Generally, this is why I encourage casting one holy, then medica two or regen, and then two more holy spams to utilize those seconds in between. Once you hit level 50, your life will become easier. You'll get medica two here, which is basically a regen for the party. So many players underestimate the pairing of these two abilities, but it's essential for casual healing content. You will apply Medica 2 with regen as it's your only way to double regen on the tank at this point. Double regen is crucial for your white mage healing journey to be as easy as possible and maximizing DPS in a way. I get many people arguing about this, but between regen and Medica 2, you're getting just around 2500 cure potency over 15 to 18 seconds. That is freaking gigantic. The general pulls is going to be as a tank. The first mob, you'll cast a regen. Once they stop, you'll use holy, then Medica 2, then spam holy, and apply regen and Medica as timers fall off. Doing this, you probably won't have to cast cure 2 often, or if at all, but that is deeply dependent on, of course, if the tank is mitigating. You will use the same rotation for a long time. There are a few variations, but this is essentially the standard. Or, well, should be the standard. If at this point you're even struggling a little bit with this, I would watch my individual healing guides 1 through 90 in order to get a full breakdown of each healing class and job to get you started, but we'll continue on. Benediction is basically another free heal. Use this as needed. Since it's a long cooldown, it's hard to work into regular healing rotations. Just treat it as an oh shit heal or just treat it as a cure 2 you need on tank. Though I rarely have to use this personally. At level 52, you'll get Asylum. This is a cure potency regen of 800. Most people try to replace Medica 2 or regen for Asylum in the above pairing. They think, Oh, well if I need a double regen, then I'll just put Asylum since it's an OGCD, but Asylum's potency is far less than a regen or Medica 2. This essentially works out as a cure 2 over 24 seconds. Now of course this isn't taking in consideration the buff that it gives to your healing, but we did cover that in the previous video so I will leave that for that video. If you're more intermediate or advanced healer then you could be using this with regen and that will probably get you by for any healing the tank might need for the pulls. At level 54 you get a flay to solace. This is not helpful yet. Treat this as a free cure 2 essentially MP wise. If you have to cure 2 for healing, which you shouldn't often, 
use this instead of that. Level 56, we get a size. Now it's better off to not treat this as a heal, but an actual damage spell. You'll get far more use out of it that way. Most of the times it will do both when you first start a dungeon and you have already applied a regen. But don't look as a size as healing, look at it as a damage. Tetragrammaton, this is an ability which does not reset your global tooldown, so an OGCD. You will now prioritize this with any single target healing you may have to do. Though Regen and Medica 2 will take care of most things and should still be used first, but then you would default to Asylum, Tetragrammaton, then Lilies, then Cure 2 if all else fails. A side note, you can see how people can get super enraged when they see players using Cure 2 by this point because there's a myriad of other abilities available at this point of leveling. So if you are still Cure 2 spamming around here, you need to just start practicing your other abilities. At level 56, we get Divine Benison. Most healers have a single target shield ability, and this is White Mages. This goes perfectly with our Regen Medica 2 pairing, and you can just apply this after those, or in between, or before, just on cooldown. Now at this point, there's always questions of if we have all these OGCDs, why are we still casting GCD regens instead of learning how to use OGCDs? This is specific to White Mage, and it's a great question. It's ultimately about damage focus. As a healer, or White Mage specifically, you're supposed to be damaging. It's a part of the game, whether you agree with it or not. The double regens only use two GCDs every 15 to 18 seconds and give you super powerful healing and offers consistency and the ability to learn how much damage tanks take by giving you a consistent unit to measure by. If you feel that you can use all those OGCDs effectively with only a regen or only a Medica 2, then I say go for it, but most do not. So it's better to be consistent instead of trying to use all these OGCDs and they don't work or you don't pair them properly and then you're just there spamming Cure 2. Moving on to Plenary Indulgence, Aflatus Rapture, and Temperance, which is a really strong party-wide healing combo. You'd use Temperance first, then Plenary Indulgence, which will give you a small heal attached to Aflatus Rapture, which is our AoE Lily ability. This can get the party back up to full health really quickly. I was in a level 90 dungeon and did just that, and within a heal and a half, I was basically at full health for the party. I would say at level 80 we have enough abilities where you may no longer need Medica 2, but it's still essential you keep regen on the tank at all times. It's too strong of a regen to not be casted. At this level, you can do regen, asylum, divine benison, and you may be fine and throw in tetragrammaton if needed. Liturgy of the Bell at level 90 is kind of a unique niche ability. When you know you're going to have room wides or an attack that's going to cause multiple damage to you, this is perfect for that. Other than that, just treat it as a regular heal. This is more of a deep dive into white mage healing for casual content, and you're going to find what works for you, but these are just some general healing rotations that are pretty standard. I highly, highly recommend on watching the previous video for some in-depth understanding of healing buffs like potency magic increase and HP recovery by healing actions. Those are very strong and I go through each one of the healers and tell you how they apply to that specific healer. A gigantic thank you to all of my YouTube, Patreon, and Discord Bun supporters as you all make this channel possible. I look forward to doing this for the other healers as well. If you want to watch a vast library of Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.